Yo, yo, what's going on? What's going on, Facebook? Good afternoon, everyone. This is your boy Steve Belcher. Thank you for mid. Thank you for tuning in to this midday broadcast of Hemodialysis Catheters: How to Keep Yours Working Well. I hope you're out there watching. I hope someone gets something from this show because this is a very important topic, especially for warriors who have hemodialysis catheters please share this broadcast if you can if you see me looking over i'm trying to uh get my broadcast so i can do a uh watch party on this so bear with me here i go so guys this information i'm getting right from here i'm not making this up this is from uh, National Kidney Foundation on catheters, uh, 2014. It's on their website. Um, but this is the thing. A lot of people don't know about it, and they don't teach it. It's there, but they don't teach it. So if you have a catheter and you're new to dialysis, how are you going to know how to keep it functioning? Your doctor's not going to tell you, and the technicians are not going to. I mean, I, I take that back. Some of the technicians may sit down and go over some of this with you, but they don't got time to do that. So, again, hey, Courtney, thanks for tuning in. So, again, if share this, Courtney, please. If you are a warrior and you got a catheter, this show is for you. Now, I want to show you two different type of catheters. This is one, which is a, a IJ. This one is called an IJ catheter, okay? You see how it's straight up? And so what happens, it goes in your jugular vein like this. So this catheter goes like, well, yeah, it goes like this. And so you may see some warriors having the catheter out on the side of their neck. This again, this is called the IJ. You had the two clamps right here. Um, this is access into the port where you connect the syringe, the 10 cc syringe. Then you have the other catheter that you may see that goes in right here, uh, the subclavian catheter, okay? Now, this one is typical. Uh, this tip right here goes into the heart chamber. And then this part is, is sticking out like that, okay? And got the, again, they got the two caps. I mean, I'm sorry, the the two snaps right here, this one for the arterial and this one for the venous, the locket, make sure nothing comes out. And then you have the opening for to aspirate the blood out. So now these things right here, these are foreign material. So what that mean is, it's going inside the body. And so anytime you got something like that, you're going to tend to have that's inside of a vein, you're going to have some clots. Now you see these um, holes at the end right here. Now imagine all the blood that's filtering through this catheter in the machine going through there and then you see these holes on the side right there where is it at right there so the reason why you have a lot of catheter problems because these little holes right here they get clotted um blood kind of sticks to it after dialysis the um byproducts, clots, even, you know, when we rinse in the blood back, by this being a foreign material, some of that blood is going to stick to these holes. And over a period of time, they're going to clog up. 
And so that's why when we have uh, patients, uh, catheters not working, when we put the syringe on, we try to aspirate uh, the blood out and we can't get anything, nine times out of 10, uh, this, this hole, let me see if you can see it. It's a hole on the side right here, this one, and then this one right here at the bottom, they tend to clot up. So we can't aspirate because blood, blood can't flow through there. You see how small that hole is? It, it, it can't. And then you have um, holes on the side. You see those holes on the side? They clot up as well. So that's why we put that medicine in. So let me let me move on with the um, with the education. I just wanted to show y'all how these catheters work and being inside the vein where uh, blood can uh, stick to these uh, little holes and uh, clog them up. So hemodialysis is a treatment used when your kidneys fail, usually at stage five. Uh, kidney disease and can no longer clean your blood and remove extra fluid from your body. A hemodialysis access or vascular access is a way to reach your blood for hemodialysis. Please share this, please. Um, if you receive hemodialysis, your access is one of the following. An AV fistula made by joining an artery and vein in your arm. An AV graft made by using a soft tube to join an artery and vein in your arm. A catheter, which is this, which I'll be talking about. A soft tubing that is placed in a large vein, usually your neck. And see, this is the soft tubing. You see how flexible it is? But when it's inside you, I'm sure this feels very funny, okay? Very, very, um, some people would say uncomfortable. So here it says, the National Kidney Foundation, main organization, recommends that AV arterial venous fistula as the preferred choice for a permanent vascular access. The AV graft is the next preferred choice for a permanent access. The catheter is recommended for temporary access. There may be conditions that prevent you from having a fistula or graft and a catheter may be used. The information is about hemodialysis catheter access, okay? So that's what this broadcast is about. We're going to be talking about hemodialysis catheter access. Okay. They look just like this. You may have it. You may not. Yours may be different. There are many ones, but normally uh, this one is real temporary. It's called a um, IJ. And then this is the one that goes in through the subclavian or to that large vein. What is a hemodialysis catheter? The catheter used for hemodialysis is a tunnel catheter because it is placed under the skin. There are two types of tunnel catheters, cuffed or non-cuffed. Non-cuffed tunnel catheters are used for emergency and for short periods, like this one. This would be a non-cuff catheter, up to three weeks. Tunnel catheters, which is like this, a type recommended by the National Kidney Foundation for temporary access, can be used for longer than three weeks when an AV fistula or graft has been placed but is not yet ready for use. There are no other options for permanent access. I've seen many warriors 
have no other options for permanent access. For example, when a patient's blood vessels are not strong enough for a fistula or graft. Catheters have two opening uh, sides, which I was showing. Catheter had two opening sides, the red, which is the arterial opening to draw blood from the vein and out of your body into the dialysis pathway. And the other is the venous or blue line, which is this, that allows clean blood to return to your body. So the um, arterial blood, which is the red, the blood is coming out, going through the machine, getting clean, and the clean blood comes back through the venous or the blue line. Now, how do you take care of that catheter if you have one? Okay, by taking good care of your access, it will last longer and you will prevent problems such as an infection and clotting. Those are the two most common problems, infection and clotting of the catheter. Okay, I'm going to give you some important steps to take to make sure this doesn't happen. One, make sure you keep the catheter dressing clean and dry. Two, make sure the area of the insertion site is clean and your care team changes the dressing at each treatment. That's very important. When you go to dialysis, each time they supposed to be changing that catheter site. Three, keep an emergency dressing kit at home in case you need to change your dressing in between treatments. Ask your dialysis care team to teach you how to change dressings in an emergency. We can do that here, okay? We can teach you how to change your dressing on this network. But the important part is get some extra supplies from the dialysis center. Lord knows you pay enough for the treatment. so. They can give you some gauze and tape. Or you can go to a pharmaceutical store like Northern Pharmacy and get what's called uh, Tegaderm, or you can order that on Amazon. Never remove the caps. Never take these off at home, these caps right here, when you're at home, okay? Air must not get into this line. Now, uh, true but sad story. I know people that were addicted to heroin that actually use these ports to inject that junk into them. And that stopped this from working. Okay. So again, Never remove these caps on your own. Only, only if you're doing this at home and you've been trained to do it, okay? Because there's certain uh, techniques and steps that you need to do when you remove these caps. You know, you, first you need to uh, soak it in some type of uh, antibiotic uh, bacterial solution, um, clean around this caps. Then once you remove the caps, you need to clean around this part right here before you put the syringe on to get access to the bloodstream. Very important. Uh, do not shower or swim. You may take baths. You must not wet your catheter site or catheter dressing. Moisture can cause infection. Again, moisture can cause infection. Taking a bath is safe if you do not allow your catheter or catheter dressing to get wet. Wear a mask over your nose. It got to be covering over this part because we each have uh, what they call staph right here in the bottom of the nose flares. Um, so wear a mask over your nose and mouth anytime the catheter is open to prevent bacteria uh, from entering the catheter in your bloodstream. Professional changing 
the uh, dressing should wear a mask and gloves as well. So when they changing your uh, catheter at the dialysis unit, they should be wearing a mask, okay, and gloves when they changing that. The caps and the clamps of your, so this is what they're talking about. The caps and the clamps, these white things right here, uh, of the catheter should be kept tightly closed when not being used for, di for dialysis, okay? Only your care team should use your dialysis catheter to draw blood or to get medications or fluid. So when you go into the hospital and you have one of these, don't let them guys get access to this if they can't draw any blood out of your veins. They may try this even in the ICU. They may use try to use one of these to uh, give you medicine because they may not can't find a vein. No, nothing is supposed to go through this. All right, nothing. If the area around your catheter feels sore or looks red, call your dialysis team at once. Ask your dialysis team about signs and symptoms that uh, require immediate attention. And normally those signs are discharge of pus from around your catheter site, redness, soreness, uh, high temperature, chills. Those are uh, common symptoms, signs and symptoms of a pending infection. Know your KT over V and URR, uh, your reduction ratio. Those um, determine how well you're getting a good dialysis. KT over V and URR are numbers that tell you how much dialysis you are getting. Uh, the Kidney Foundation recommends using KT over V. If you are receiving enough dialysis, okay, your KT over V should be at least 1.2. And this is what the National Kidney Foundation is saying. If you are receiving enough dialysis, your KT over V should be at least 1.2 or greater. Anything below that, you're not getting a good dialysis. 0 0.9, 0 0.8. 0 0.65, you're not getting nothing. I mean, no adequate dialysis. Okay. If your if URR is used, it should be 65% or more. If your numbers are too low, one possible cause may be that your access is not working well. <laughs> I'm telling you, a lot of this stuff goes on people get their treatment times increased they uh, uh maybe come in an extra day and they may have a catheter and they may not know that could be something going on with the catheter and it says one possible cause may be that your access is not working well Act, ask your dialysis team to check your access okay should I have any concerns about my catheter? Sometimes, even when you are very careful, your access may clot or become infected. And so we talked about that, clots. And I, and I said that clots can form inside the opening of the catheter or form on the outside of the catheter blocking the opening. This can cause blood uh, to flow at a slower rate than the rate your doctor ordered. If the blood flow rate remains low for more than one dialysis treatment, the catheter should be checked and treated the same day. Early treatment may prevent the clot from totally blocking the catheter. It is important to restore the recommended blood flow rate and treat clots that are forming so that your catheter continues to work well 
and you get the amount of dialysis you need. Infection. This can happen as well. And this is really important. Infection can also cause, I'm sorry, infection can also occur even with a good blood flow rate. It is important to follow your catheter care instructions exactly as you were taught in order to avoid infection. You should know the following signs and symptoms of a catheter infection and report them to your doctor or dialysis team right away so you can get the proper treatment as quickly as possible. The signs and symptoms of a, of a catheter infection include fevers, I said that, chills, drainage from the catheter exit site, redness or tenderness around the catheter exit site, general feeling of weakness and illness. Treatment depends on the type of infection, but may include an ointment applied directly to the infected area if it is an exit site of infection. Antibiotic medication if there is a drainage from the exit site. An intravenous IV antibiotic, a solution containing an antibiotic that is administered directly into a vein if the infection has spread to the blood. So if you got a bloodstream infection, all right, you're going to get IV antibiotics. What happens when my catheter is not working well? A decrease in the blood flow rate ordered by your doctor is a sign the catheter is not working well. If this occurs for more than one treatment in a week, the catheter should be checked. Now, a lot of warriors, you may not know your catheter could be not working well and the technician or nurse is steadily turning your blood flow rate down and not saying nothing as the machine goes off. So please be aware if you have a catheter, what is your blood flow rate? And if you're running at it, and if you're not running at your audit blood flow rate, what is the reason why? Because if not, you're not getting an adequate dialysis treatment. I'm telling you, again, if this occurs for more than one treatment in a week, now this is the National Kidney Foundation saying this, but your unit not telling you this. Again, a decrease in the blood flow rate if you have a catheter or access ordered by your doctor is a sign the catheter or access is not working as it should. If this occurs for more than one treatment in a week, the catheter or access should be checked. The lower blood flow rate will cause you to receive less dialysis. You will then need a longer than usual hemodialysis treatment to get the proper amount of dialysis. A lot of people don't realize and recognize this if they have a catheter. That's why we do these broadcasts so you'll know. Take your treatment back. Here they say, another sign that your catheter is not working well may be the pre-pump arterial pressure alarms. These sounds notify the care team that your catheter or vascular access is not allowing a free draw of blood, okay? This can be a sign that a clot is forming in the catheter blocking the flow of blood. It's telling you right there. The National Kidney Foundation has this information telling you what could be the problem with these alarms. And it's not being shared because a lot of people don't know about it. If you're watching, how many of y'all knew this? If you had a catheter. Again, another sign that your catheter 
is not working well may be the pre-pump arterial pressure alarms. These sounds notify the care team that your catheter or vascular access is not allowing a free draw of blood. This can be a sign that a clot is forming in the catheter blocking the blood flow or blocking the flow of blood. Did anyone know that who has a catheter watching this right now? That's why we're here. That's why it's important to share this broadcast with warriors so they know and go into treatment and be mindful of this. What can be done to remove the blockage from my catheter? Let me put that up there. Yeah, Courtney. You got plenty of long. Yep. Yep. If you had the catheter. Yeah, Courtney, thank you for, for definitely chiming in. You know. Yeah, yeah. A lot of Courtney, a lot of people don't know. A lot of people don't know, and that's why I want to do this so they know. The problem is people listening and getting to this information to hear it and understanding it and looking at their um, situations to see if this could be causing problems um doing their treatment yeah they'll do that they'll blame it on the machine especially if you had a catheter because they don't want to fool with it they don't want to they don't like to fool with catheters you know you know switching the lines back and forth and um stopping treatment and aspirating putting the two syringes on and, and having you to cough and stuff like that flushing the catheter you may have seen or heard of those uh, uh, terms, and and that's what they do. To, but because they, they don't want to do it, so they'll turn the pump flow down to two fifty or two hundred, and you're not getting a good treatment. So, what can be done to remove the blockage from my catheter? This is important. Very, very important, and I'm about to explain what's done. A lot of warriors, you had this done and didn't even know it. So treatment is the administration of a clot-busting medication called tissue plasminogen activator, or TPA, okay? Most dialysis centers can give the medication while you are in your dialysis chair, thus preventing a hospital visit. If you are at the end of your treatment, TPA can be given just before your next dialysis appointment. Ask your doctor how you can arrange to be given this medication before your next treatment. But let me tell you something. A lot of these clinics, they don't want to pay for TPA because they don't get reimbursed. And so they don't want to have it there. But DeVita is one big is, is one clinic that uh, has uh, this. It's called Cath Flow. And they may have one or two. And they tell the uh, staff or the nurses to do everything you can so we don't have to use it. Only use it at your last resort. And so it costs a lot of money um, to use this. And that's why they don't like to. So again, treatment for these uh, clots are called, uh, which is uh, the administration of clot busting medication called tissue plas plasminogen activator or TPA. And most dialysis centers can give this medication while you're in the clinic. I've gave it many times. We tell the uh, person to uh, wait 45 minutes, I'll come back and aspirate. And normally 
the catheter is working, uh, thus preventing that go to the hospital and have them do it. If you are at the end of your treatment, yes, we can put this in and let it sit in your catheter until you come back. That helps, but a lot of units don't do that no more unless the doctor gives an order. If the clot is not treated when signs and symptoms of an early clot are found, the catheter can progress to be fully clotted. You may then be required to visit the hospital or to access vascular lab to have the catheter checked and possibly have this exchanged for a completely new catheter. How many people had to get new catheters put in? You know, I know many warriors had to get them switched, different sides. Um, and a lot of this can be um, averted just by proper care, understanding, and education. How is medication given? Okay, how is the medication given? The nurses. Uh, inject the medication direct. We put it right into these ports right here. We open these up. We draw it up in the syringes. Uh, we open them up. I don't have any syringes with me. Okay. We open them up. Let me put this up here. And we connect the syringes here and we push in. Okay. We inject the medicine in and it goes into this line, okay, and sits in here. The medication sits in here. You can't see it, but it sits in here, and its job is to dissolve the clots, okay, after a period of time. Once they dissolve, we come back. The syringes are already connected. We pour or we aspirate, and the blood should be able to flow through very well, and you're able to start treatment. But when that happens, you can't keep doing that. You either got to get your catheter exchanged or probably get it stripped. To get, or They call it stripped or cleaned out. And so... Um, so this medication, it sits or remains... They got 30 minutes. We normally go by the product uh, 45 minutes uh, to break down the clot. After 30 minutes, if enough blood flow is not restored, the doctor can't re re repeat the process. Um, what are the benefits of treating the clot early? By restoring your blood flow, hemodialysis can work as it should to remove the toxins and excess fluids from your body. Taking care of the clots early results in fewer treatment interruptions and improved quality of life on dialysis. Other benefits are the prevention of additional health problems and the chance to live longer on dialysis. What can I do to keep my catheter working well? Number one they have on here, check this out. Learn as much as possible about your prescribed treatment plan. I've always said that. Your blood flow rate, how often and how long you need treatment. You got to know what's going on with your treatment. And a lot of people don't. Follow the treatment plan. Stay for your full treatment time. Okay. Keep your dialysis appointments. Arrive on time for your hemodialysis treatment. Ask your doctor how much dialysis uh, you should be getting. Be, be involved in your treatment. Keep a record of your KT over V and your URR numbers. Talk to your dialysis team if your numbers are not as good as they should be. These numbers, again, your KT over V should be 1.2 or greater, and your URR should be really 66 or greater. Share your concerns with your doctor and dialysis team. You may want to ask them the following questions. How can I tell if my catheter is not working? You should know that. You should know when your catheter is not working and how well it's working. 
Uh, what is the flow rate my doctor order for me? I always say that. When you go in, make sure you know what your blood flow rate is and that your uh, technician or nurse has it set on that pre prescribed flow rate. Why does the flow rate for my catheter need to be at this level? They may turn it down. You may uh, see your flow rate may be 350. You may see it running at 200. Why is that? Ask those questions. Check, look, learn. Uh, what is the flow rate my doctor ordered for me? Why does the flow rate for my catheter need to be at this level? If my flow rate should go down, when will I be giving clot dissolving medication? Will the clot dissolving medication interrupt my dialysis treatment? Absolutely. If they got to put that in, it stops the treatment. They put it in and they may not even run you your full treatment. They may cut your time because they may say another patient has to go behind you in that chair. So you got to be fully aware of what's going on, because if you're not thinking about that, you are just going to get you may end up if your treatment is four hours and they take you off because they got to put that uh, clot busting agent in. You may end up only getting two and a half to three hours out of your four hour treatment. So please be mindful of that. And if you're only getting that much, you're not getting a good treatment. Okay. Uh, how will you put the clot dissolving medication in my catheter? How long do I have to wait for it to work? Know that, that when they put it in, it's supposed to wait 30 to 45 minutes. If you wait longer than that, call a nurse because then that, that's getting into your treatment. I'm telling you. These nurses forget, they got other patients, they get interrupted, uh, may have to uh, do something else, and you're sitting right there for, and, and they may forget about you. It may be an hour or nine, hour and a half before they remember that they you sitting there with that um, with that medication and not unless the technician come and remind them. But yeah, please be mindful of that. And what else? Oh, and what are the signs and symptoms? of an infection. Very important to know. Very, very important. All right, guys. Uh, I hope you uh, got something out of this broadcast. We talked about um, catheters. The other one fell on the floor. Let me get it. This is the other one. Okay. Catheters, please be aware if you got these of infections, or uh, low blood flow, clot forming, very, very important. Uh, one also I want to uh, bring out, uh, not having to do with the show, is we'd like to get your own uh, Urban Health Outreach memorabilia card, uh, $10 donation. We'll send one out to you. And on the back of this, which is so good, about this particular card is on the back. It has a GFR uh, uh, scale as well, where it tells you, let me take this down. It tells you uh, the different stages of kidney disease uh, one may fall into. And so if you got this, it also has a place for your lanyard. We'll send you out a lanyard as well. So when you got your card and you're wearing it, you know, you go to the doctors and you check on your kidney numbers and he say, uh, your kidney numbers are 30%. You can go behind here, right? And look at and see where 30% is. And as you can see, 59 to 30, is stage three kidney disease. So you'll know what stage you're at. And you can see here, the last stage of kidney disease is stage five, okay? Less than 15%. So again, stages of kidney disease on one side, and showing your support to Urban Health Outreach Media as we put that information out in the community. 
Again, $10 donation. Give you the uh, cash app where you can send that if you would like one. Just send your name, information, or get you one right out. Again, on the back, got the stages of kidney disease. So when you go get your kidneys numbers checked, if you're diabetic or you have hypertension, which are the two leading causes of kidney failure, if you had those two chronic diseases, when you go to the doctor's hospital or wherever you go to the clinic, to get your numbers checked, when you ask them for your kidneys numbers and your GFR, you can see where you land in the stages of kidney disease. If you would like one of these, you have the Cash App right up on the screen. Be a part of the family, show your support with your very own Urban Health Outreach memorabilia card and gfr card so guys thanks for tuning in for this midday noon broadcast hemodialysis catheters how to keep yours working well share this broadcast and stay tuned for many more education broadcasts to come tonight on kidney disease education moment we will have Roxy Johnson, 21-year kidney warrior from Beaufort, North Carolina. She's going to be right here sharing her story and what she does to stay well with this disease. That's tonight from 8 to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, USA. Thanks, Courtney Brown, for tuning in and all your support. God bless you, Courtney. Hope everything is going well with you. Uh, stay blessed and encouraged. And I'm going to have you back on soon so we can revisit the transplant diet. So, guys, until next time, have a great day. Enjoy your lunch. Thanks for watching. Share this. Make it go viral because people need to know what's going on, especially if you have a subclavian catheter. Thanks, guys. God bless you. Stay blessed and encouraged. Peace.